Hey there, Tyler. Thanks for attaching the part. So, looks like uh, we have uh, some geometry that was built, I'm guessing, off of something else. Because if we come into Sketch 1, um, it looks like you have it at the center point. Uh, but it's not vertical or horizontal. If you go to the degrees of freedom, um, you can see that. So, if we make this one vertical, um, it makes it a little bit easier, and then you can have uh, good dimensions locked in. Um, so, if we finish our sketch, the whole thing's going to flip over. Um, so then we can go one by one into the sketches. Um, you'll notice that uh, if you go to degrees of freedom, this line isn't constrained fully. Uh, just a simple thing to trim it out. So we're going to do that real quick with these ones. Okay, so then if we come into sketch six, we can trim this real quick and show our degrees of freedom. Now it looks like this point is uh, has some freedom to it so let's say we just uh, select this line and delete it go to our wireframe um, what you're trying to do is uh, pretty much put a face on this but extrude it um, it doesn't have a closed loop and the easiest way to figure that out is if you go up to 3d model and extrude if it is a closed loop it'll show up like that or you can select it if not um, it looks like it's uh, kind of goes around like that so there's a couple different ways you can go about doing it. Um, if you come into the sketch here, if you right click on the line, say close loop, it'll ask you, okay, I'm going to select all the lines. We'll see how this now cuts in. It's not really what we want. So even if we say here to here to there, it's going to say these are not in a single point, so it'll join them. Okay, it does not like that because it's actually uh, stuck to somewhere else somehow. So if we come... Uh, back an easier way to do this is um, well <laughs> I'll show you real quick so if we just draw a line here to there to there to there to here finish our sketch and extrude it shows up so, and then you could obviously do your face on that, hit OK, and it joins them together. Now, the reason that is is because they were drawn all at once, and they had the green line that was connecting them. Um, another way is if this is there, we don't have a good dimension for that. Um, you have 180 degrees for here, which be better suited by using the collinear constraint which basically does the 180 degrees just makes them in line um, and then this one right here it's a crazy dimension um, you're never gonna be able to mention measure that so you shoot 70.1 that one's 125 like I said that one's crazy so easiest way select this right click that's right select other so you have a curve and then a construction line so I'm going to delete out the construction line for all of these and then just put a measurement to there and there well just kidding make this one 7.9 Okay, because that's what this was. And so you'll notice that that's not connected. So if you select that, so there, nope. Yeah, so kind of just clean that up a little bit. Um, that's the best advice I can give, I guess. Um, then you can just face it, and then it'll join up there. Uh, once you get done with that, you can create a sketch on this face. Project the geometry of this. 
draw a line again from the middle. And again, since we rotated the part, um, vertically would be okay. And project this line, trim this, finish, and fold the part. And the radius is a sixteenth. And you can flip it in that direction and OK. So now you see that the bend line comes into your other line there like you want it to. And then again on this side, I don't know if that's what you're looking for or not, but hopefully that helps.